A young girl, desperate to find her sister's killer, leads the women of Rosado and Associates to seek justice for the accused, or die trying. Accused, new from best-selling author Lisa Scatolini. Hi, I'm Lisa Scatolini, and this is my co-author, Little Tony, my puppy. I know, adorable. I put him to sleep. Great. Um, I thought I would take a second to talk to you about the writing life, because a lot of people ask me, what is your typical day like? And I'm actually very interested in, in other people's typical day, whether they're writers or not. I always sort of feel like with research, my question is always, what is it like to be you? And that's kind of what I want to answer now. Because it's an interesting job in that you do it, at least I do it in my house. Uh, I write seven days a week, I write all day long, and I write into the night. I know that, I know I have no life, but that's really, that is what writing requires. It's really hard work. It's good hard work, but it's hard work. I think um, Jack London has a wonderful quote about writing, which is, inspiration is something you go after with a club. In other words, you don't, um, wait for the muse to strike you, which is what I think a lot of people think. What really strikes you is that you have like everything else to persevere and also practice. I mean, I'm on my 15th novel. I think my 15th novel is better than my first novel, as much as I love my first novel, because writing, like everything, improves with practice. And what I do every day is I sit down in my chair and I write. My little rule is apply butt to chair. Don't get up. Don't run around, don't meet people. For, people are always sort of, can you meet me for lunch? You know what? No. I wish I could, but I can't because I have a job and it doesn't benefit from interruption. You know, a novel, there's a great quote, I think it's Ann Beattie who says, you're trying to have a unified consciousness and you cannot have that unity with interruption. I write every day and I have a word count. I say to myself, try to do 2,000 words. Uh, the typical novel is 90,000 to 120,000 words. You can do the math. But the bottom line is, I try to do 2,000 words a day. Actually, I insist that I'm, I do 2,000 words. And that means some days it can take from 8 o'clock in the morning till 10 o'clock at night. And some days I get it done in the morning and I'm all proud of myself, but I don't get to stop. I try, if I'm rocking that hard, I'm going to stay with it. Um, I don't write with an outline. Lots of people do. But I'm convinced the world divides into people who are super organized and write with outlines and God bless them. When I grow up, I'm going to be one of them. But right now, it's just, what's your idea? Dirty blonde, go tell the story. And tell the story in drips and drabs. What would actually happen next? And the truth is, I'm figuring it out as you're figuring it out. So I hope that the writing has a real freshness to it because I don't know where the story, people say, do you know the ending to your story? I don't, I don't know the middle to my story. That's how I do it. And I make sure the first draft is get done. I'm not allowed to edit at all in the first draft stage. Finally finish it, and then I can relax. Then it's polishing time. I can edit, I can decide which sentences should stay, which sentences should go, and how I can make each sentence better to tell a terrific story. That's my job, and that's how I do it. Well, it's, it's funny because I've been writing for 20 years. I started with Rosado. And I guess in more recent years, I, you always want to try, to, especially you're trying to grow, especially in this environment, in this economy. And as also as, a, as an author, you don't want to really, I don't want to say an artist because that sounds pretentious, but you really want to see if you can do different things. So for a while, I left Rosado behind, which was a wonderful series, and I loved it. And the truth is, I kind of missed it. And then what sort of happened in short is that my kid grew up and moved away. And I was like, I have a lot more time on my hands. And I have no social life, which is, seems to be a thing that never changes. So in any event, I'm like, I know how to fill my time. And I had missed these characters. And a lot of people had the emails always like, we love your new book, but when is Rosado coming back? So it's come back and accused, October. What it's like to go back to those people, it really is like your high school reunion only great. Like, all oh, the guys are still great looking, they're always in you. That's probably the wrong approach. But the bottom line is, it's old friends. I mean, and I really wanted to, I sort of thought it was important for me to kind of have some routine, a little bit, um, you know, I was sort of, what, am I writing an emotional thriller now? Or am I writing risotto? So now I have sort of a little routine. I kind of like it. I can plan a writing schedule, which is basically every day. But every October, a risotto book will come out. I thought, you know, start again. And in a way, I think I'm happy the way the book turned out because it felt 
really fresh, and it's it's a, as a, as an author, it's a different discipline. You know, to write a series over time is examining characters over 15 years. 15 years. When you're writing a standalone, which I love doing those too, they're the ones that come out in April. Um, they that's 300 pages. It's an entirely different exercise. So you sort of, you know. All this marketing aside, it really is about the writing in the end, and it keeps you on your writing toes. It's as simple as that. Honestly, look, I, I have been writing for 20 years, as I say, and I have watched my career grow. That means it's very recent memory for me to be like, in a book, no bookstore wants you, nobody reviews you, there's no line, there's no, I, I'm grateful, I'm lucky, I'm not stupid, I know that. So I sort of feel really lucky to be able to do this job. It supported my daughter. It supports me, and it's what I love. I mean, I love to yap and tell stories, and now I just write them down, and I love writing. I also love, frankly, that these images are women are in the culture. You know, these are really, I think they're very women like me. They're like all of us. We're sort of special in our own ways, and we have a lot of resources, and we don't always get the spotlight when we're in a novel where the girlfriend or the wife. Sometimes we should get to be the star. And in Accused, it's all women law firm. And they're the stars. It's true. I mean, it's the not last just book, women necessarily. No, in fact, that was a real stretch for me. The last emotional thriller, as they're called, to write a, about a, a male main character. I mean, I'm divorced twice. I don't have the men thing figured out. But I also thought, if you're afraid to write it, you should write it. And I wanted to see if I could try to do it, especially a returning vet, a guy who sort of feels a little second banana, and did the research. I mean, I found an army surgeon who sat down with me. And that became kind of my go-to guy and to write that book. And it was really, don't go. And I was really proud of it. Yeah. So you're also writing with your daughter. Yes. Now, so you're squeezing in all these other new books. And right. you write this column for the Philadelphia Inquirer. Well, the books are actually a compilation of the columns. Right. And then we write extra for the books. So what's it like writing with your daughter? It's totally a guess. We did it because I, we were, I would miss Derma Bombeck, basically. And I was like, and also I thought, why can't I just write funny I like to be funny, um, about my life. And then we start to write about our relationship, because I think a lot of mother-daughters, you know you're a family man, um, you know, you're tight, but sometimes you're loggerheads, and which is a, of a fancy word for saying want to kill each other. And so we started to write these books. She, I'll write, my, I don't edit her. So in a sense, we don't write per se together. I write about something, and then we put them all in a book, and she writes about her things. Often we are writing about each other but we don't edit each other at all. And then when we put them in the book, like the last title was um, Meet Me at Emotional Baggage Claim. Uh, we noticed when we put them together that, well, I wrote a column about reading obituaries, obituaries, and she wrote a column about reading wedding announcements. And I was like, I can't remember the last time I, I read a wedding announcement. And she's like, I would never read the obituaries. And you sort of like, I think it strikes a chord with people. Okay, with, so tell everybody which is what her nice. name is. Her name is Francesca Saratella. Francesca, and so no problems writing together as mother-daughter. Not at all. I mean, I think it would be different if we tried to edit, you know, and yeah. she's writing a novel that she's working on now. Excellent. And perfect example, I'll look it over, and I think everything she does is great. I mean, we all have a, a refrigerator for a reason, right? It's plastered with our kids' stuff. Um, but like she said to me once, you know, I can probably find an editor, but I really only do have one mother. And I guess sort of being a single mom, and it's always sort of been, we are best friends. She doesn't need me to fly specker. And the truth is, I think the job of any parent, as you well know, is to help kids find their voice. And I, I mean that in every sense. You're not trying to make your kid be you. She doesn't write like me. I, I think she writes better than I do in lots of ways. And she's a more, uh, a lyrical, more s a slower, more uh, deliberative. It's very poetic, the way she writes. Um, I'm like a car chase. So it's sort of like, where, where is it? And you wonder, and when you w read those books that we write, they're both funny, because she's funny. But we're funny about different things, and we're funny in different ways. Uh, but what, the important point about that, though, is that is where I found somebody that actually led me on a path that would take me here, amazingly enough, which was Nancy Drew. Can we talk about the girl detective? Because we need to talk about the girl detective. And I will tell you as an author that anybody who's worth your time writing anything is going to try to choose telling details, right? Now, if you think about what Nancy Drew had, she had, um, she had a best girlfriend, because we all have girlfriends, yay. She had a boyfriend, because she's not a middle-aged woman. Just saying. <laughs> be real. Let's be real. Is my bitterness showing? Good. Fine. Excellent. 
he had a father, kind of a benign presence. I think of him like Jimmy, Jimmy Stewart. Do you, does anyone know who that is? <laughs> Good, then we can keep talking. Excellent. And uh, she lacked a mother. Remarkable. Please note, to kill a mockingbird. There's a reason this happens. When there's not a mother in the picture, like my mother would have had her in a convent. <laughs> but the child can go on adventures and be on her own when there's no mother. Nancy Drew. The telling detail on Nancy Drew, if I may suggest to you, if you think about what you remember about Nancy Drew, isn't it the blue roadster? Remember the car? There's a reason for that. These four wheels will take you anywhere. There's something about a car that we think of as quintessentially American, and Nancy Drew was in a car. And the most important thing about Nancy Drew in that very telling detail of a roadster is what? She's in the driver's seat. She is nobody's passenger. She is an American girl having adventures on her own. What's she doing? You won't remember a Nancy Drew plot. What you remember is the girl and the roadster. In any event, I start writing, 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 writing. Um, I don't want you to think this is a great fairy tale because I was broke, 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 broke. And um, I got rejection letters from a New York agent that said things like, we don't have time to take any more clients, and if we did, we wouldn't take you. <laughs> I see that guy every year at Book Expo, where I was the keynote. <laughs> I know, revenge is sweet. And, I, and, and you know, I still, I see him, he's calling me. He's like, Lisa, I'm going, I don't hear you. I don't, I don't hear you. Yes, because I, my mother taught me to keep hate alive, and I do. So <laughs> I'm that petty, really. How is the world different when women run it? Because that's what happens in those books. There are so many that I'd written a whole series of them, and then the, there is a little more of a more insecure partner. Let's think if she's, she has fake blonde hair, and she's about 5'2". She's Italian-American. She grew up in South <laughs> Philly. Oh, wait, it's supposed to be fiction. Um, <laughs> That would be Mary D'Annunzio, who's sort of like my alter ego. And she was the insecure one who actually became a partner. So I had to reboot the series as Rosado and D'Annunzio. I started it at Accused. The next one last year was Betrayed. This is one is Corrupted. You see the pattern because you're smart people. <laughs> ABC. Because Sue Grafton is done with the, uh, the alphabet, and there is no copyright on that, and ain't it great? I don't know how you bring about peace and love and justice any other way. Books teach empathy. That's the whole message of To Kill a Mockingbird. If you walk in somebody else's shoes, that's how you really understand them. And any time you read a book, you are exercising empathy because you're in, as Ann Beatty says, a unified consciousness of another soul for 400 pages. And if they're going to write it true and write it honest and really open up their heart, you're going to feel their soul, and I'm going to feel yours. You, I do that on the micro level because I get to write them. But you are doing something so amazing and so valuable, and believe it or not, though I might not look like the kids in your countries, I am the kids in your countries. I was that kid. I'm a kid from South Philly, and I never would have had a chance but for what you do, for literacy, for libraries, for all of us, for the arts, for justice, for peace, and for love. That's true. I think that's true. Anyway, thank you.